Welcome to the Southwestern Ontario Real Estate Show. SWAR, episode number two. And so in case you missed episode number one, the idea behind this show is on my YouTube channel, I constantly find myself wanting to share articles and different information about my local London, Ontario and Southwestern Ontario real estate market and kind of what's going on economically across the board. But I didn't until recently, until this show essentially, have a platform to share these articles with you guys. So that's the idea behind this show. Simply, I'm gonna share with you articles that I stumble across that impact us as Southwestern Ontario real estate investors. So in today's episode in particular, I wanna discuss with you the employment scene, what's going on in London, Ontario, as well as what's going on across the board in Southwestern Ontario. I constantly seem to find that I'm bumping into all this misinformation and anecdotal stories that doesn't really jive with the actual facts that are going on. And so in fact, I want to highlight and give a shout out to the London Free Press who did a fantastic job on an article that we're gonna be discussing today. And that was a long form article. And specifically, this long form London Free Press article was lots of jobs, no workers across Southwestern Ontario. That's what's kind of crazy. London, Ontario's employment picture, our unofficial employment rate is 5.5%. We're rocking full employment people. We have a great robust economy going on here. And yet we constantly hear about people struggling to get jobs, struggling to get good jobs. And yet this article, to me, it did a great job of highlighting what's actually going on and not letting us get hyped up by a mainstream media that loves to promote fear. Before we get into exactly what this article talked about, I just wanted to highlight, if you're currently looking for a job in Southwestern Ontario, if you're struggling to find employment, this article in fact had tons of great information. So there'll be a link to this article in the video description down below you can check out. But in particular, it just highlighted a ton of websites that you can use as resources to try and find employment. Resources like London Tech Jobs, the LEDC.com, AccessLocalTalent.com, Nighthunter, JobBank, Eluda, and Indeed.com. And so those are all great resources. And one particular I want to highlight for you, if you're new to the London, Ontario, or Southwestern Ontario region, is Nighthunter. If you're in Sarnia or London, Ontario, Nighthunter is, in my opinion, one of the better websites to go look for local employment. In fact, when I used to be looking for jobs, or looking for opportunities, I would frequently find that Night Hunter often had a lot of job postings from very local or small employers that for whatever reason didn't seem to get reposted on bigger websites like monster.ca or indeed.ca or the job bank. So again, just a quick tip there, check out Night Hunter if you are looking for a job in London, Ontario. One thing that I did want to point out about this article that they did a good job of indicating or breaking down for us is even though our unemployment rate officially is at 5.5%, uh, about one in five working age adults in London aren't active in the labor force, meaning they're neither working nor looking for jobs, Statistic Canada reports. London in particular may have a problem with middle-aged men struggling to find another good paying job after big industrial employers such as Kellogg's, Electromotive Diesel and Ford shut down their plants here. But there are other worrying undercurrents. Many frustrated employers in the London region fret about what they see as a waning work ethic, especially among younger people. They tell similar stories of job applicants who don't show up for interviews or, if hired, don't bother to show up for work. So there's a lot for us to unparse just in those couple of paragraphs. The first thing is, yeah, well, it's a complaint I have on a bunch of different fronts, but first of all, in the media, we constantly hear about all these plants closing. I think that that gets way more press when a Kellogg's closes versus when, say, a new cannabis-oriented business opens up. And I think that's just something we need to be aware of that almost with anything when it comes to the media, bad news sells a lot more advertising than good news does. It just gets more eyeballs, it gets more attention. So inherently, an ad-based news agency is gonna be, they're gonna to trend towards negativity. So I think that that's something to be aware of. But it is a good point that a lot of middle-aged people find themselves out of employment when their employer shuts down and maybe they're not motivated or they just don't even know where to turn to get the resources to get retrained so that they can rejoin the employment world, so that they can get back into the economy and become an active producer. As well, there is a section in this article that talks about millennials and employers' frustrations with millennials. Uh, 
I'm inherently a little bit suspect of these articles that are constantly talking about millennials and their lack of work ethic. I just haven't seen enough real hard data to back it up. I've definitely heard the anecdotal stories, but that being said, without really a baseline to compare it to, it's hard for me to really trust and a lot of the information about how millennials aren't motivated. Because when we host our meetups here in London, Ontario, at say the real meetups or the London on Fire meetups, I'm constantly surrounded by dozens and dozens of hardworking, motivated, driven, smart individuals. There's definitely hardworking, driven millennials out there, and I'm not even convinced that it's an overarching issue, generationally speaking. I think it's more of a societal shift, and I don't think it's only a societal shift among the younger generation. I think it's very broad. But just my thoughts, I'd love to get your opinion. Are millennials lazier? Are they, do they have a worse work ethic? Let me know in the comment section down below and feel free to share your anecdotal experiences. I'd love it if you shared some context and perspective by letting us know where you live, what your age is, all that good stuff. One anecdotal story that this London Free Press article brought up was the Chapman's Ice Cream Factory. And so that's just uh, south of the Owen Sound area and they discuss how they're currently offering a $500 signing bonus for basic production jobs. And in fact, it goes on to kind of paint a bigger, broader picture of what, say, employment at Chapman's would look like. So the starting wage is relatively modest, 16 bucks an hour, but Chapman said employees get a full set of benefits, including a pension and a Christmas bonus, as well as the $500 bonus when they pass probation. I mean, for someone straight out of high school looking for employment, that doesn't sound too shabby. Full benefits, pension, signing bonus, 16 bucks an hour. To me, that seems like you could make a living wage off of that. You could survive. And ideally, it would give you the platform, the base, for you to continue to progress throughout the economy and upgrade your skill set or upgrade your employment if that was something you were interested in doing. However, one thing that did blow my mind about this article was a quote from Chapman. So still Chapman said the unemployment rate is low and applicants can be choosy. He said it's not uncommon to schedule job interviews for 20 applicants and have only five show up. That is crazy. If, if you're booking interviews for 20 people and only five show up, that either tells me that like this is an extremely hot economy where employees can be so choosy, job seekers can be so choosy, they don't even have to show up for interviews because they're getting job offers left, right, and center. Or maybe it does hint at some sort of uh, issue with uh, the people they're applying, some sort of quality issue. Again, maybe though that means that all the quality employees are hired, that they are working at full employment, and so it's just those that otherwise wouldn't even be part of the economy are joining it, and that's why we see this. I don't know, it's, it's really interesting to me. I'm shocked by hearing those numbers. Are you currently looking to hire in Southwestern Ontario and are you experiencing similar issues where you're scheduling interviews and people aren't showing up or you're hiring them and they don't show up or they don't show up after a day or two? I'd love to hear what you're actually experiencing. So let me know in that comment section down below. The article also does a great job of not just focusing on manufacturing or plant jobs, but also discusses what's going on with construction, restaurants, the full gamut. Yeah, it definitely, it sounds like there's a lot of employers out there that would love to get more employees and they are struggling to find it. And the article does touch upon this as well. One of the issues with that is that can actually slow down an economy if, if jobs go unfilled for a lack of qualified applicants. It can really slow down what could be an otherwise robust growing economy. So it is something we should be aware of. However, talking as landlords, overall it paints a pretty rosy picture. It paints a picture of full employment. It paints a picture where your tenants should be able to make ends meet. They should be able to pay you rent every month because it seems like our economy is firing if not on all cylinders, nearly on all cylinders at this point. One more thing I want to highlight for you guys on this article before we move on was the comment section. And now the comment section on the London Free Press article, at best, it can be a bit of a swamp. There was actually some quality comments on this. Uh, there was the usual complaining. So the one comment in particular I wanted to highlight for you guys was from Robert Schwantz. So starting at $16 per hour, so 40 hours at 52 hours a week equals 32, 33,000 minus a bunch of these expenses, blah, blah, blah. Essentially he lays things out that there's no way you could live off of $16 an hour. 
Now, can you live the high life off of $16 an hour? No, you, you definitely can't live the high life. But can you make ends meet? Can you survive off of $16 an hour? Absolutely. And so I want to give a shout out to Grant Smith, who actually broke down the numbers in real terms to lay out that yes, you could in fact survive off of $33,000. So first things first, at $33,000, you're actually going to net about just over $26,000. He then goes on to itemize all the expenses that one person would expect to incur if they were, say, living at this level and kind of starting out. Then he goes on to show that essentially you're looking at a net surplus for the year of almost $3,000. So essentially what that means is you're able to save 10% of your net pay. You're able to save almost 10% of your gross pay. So with someone just starting out from high school, that seems like a pretty solid position. That seems like an actual great foundation to build a life upon if you only have that high school education. So again, it doesn't seem that bleak to me. In fact, this article pointed out that in Simcoe, there's a ton of jobs going unfilled at the 18 to $22 an hour range. And again, the difference between 16 and $22 an hour is drastic. So if you could get that $22 an hour job out of high school, I mean, I think that you'd be in a great position to start building your financial foundation. But again, that's just my opinion. I want this to become a two-way conversation. So jump in that comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the London, Ontario employment scene. Let me know your thoughts on what's going on just in general in regards to Southwestern Ontario's employment scene as well. How, how's this impacting us as landlords? And the big question is, are millennials lazy? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to get your perspective. I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Two more quick articles I want to discuss with you from the Lund Free Press that also impact what's going on in the employment scene here in Southwestern Ontario. The first one is about Diamond Aircraft. And if you're not familiar, Diamond Aircraft is kind of a darling of London, Ontario manufacturing scene. They manufacture planes. A lot of their planes get used for pilot training. And this article on Diamond highlights what's going on with employment in the pilot field. And it looks like we have a giant need of pilots. In fact, Diamond Aircraft is having some of their record years. They're going to produce 75 planes this year, expected to produce 150 planes next year. That's doubling their production. They currently employ like 270 employees and are still looking to fill more. They just actually signed their biggest agreement to date for orders and it was an order for 110 planes from a pilot training school out of Indiana. And this order was worth $35 million just by itself for those 110 planes. But it's expected that there's over 750,000 pilot positions that are going to need to be created and filled in the coming years. And so that just spells amazing things for Diamond. It spells amazing things in general for pilot employment as well as uh, aircraft manufacturing. So yeah, just kind of want to highlight that positive story as well. And one more positive story I wanted to highlight for you guys about the job scene is what's going on in Strathroy with Canbev. And so if you're not familiar, Canbev right now has a plant in Strathroy that employs about 100 employees. That's expected to double by the end of this year. They're gonna be producing what's a marijuana-based uh, drinking beverage. To me, articles like the Diamond Aircraft or the Canbev article are just perfect examples of what's going on in this changing economy, in this dynamic employment scene. So yes, while we're seeing big, big manufacturing employers like Kellogg's and Ford shut down their plants, we're seeing a lot of new innovative businesses opening up, a lot of smaller businesses opening up, and while they may not employ hundreds or thousands, they still have a dramatic impact and aggregate on our local economy. And I think that that trend's gonna continue. And so that's something I think we just need to be aware of as real estate investors when we're reading the headlines. Essentially, just don't read the headlines. We need to dig in deeper because far too often for the press, for the media, they focus on negativity. They focus on scary stories because that gets more attention. But it seems like things are pretty good right now. So good news is ruling the day as far as I can see, but let me know in the comment section down below what are your thoughts on everything we discussed today. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, if you like this video, if you like what I'm trying to do with these videos, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel, and otherwise, until next time, remember, make money as a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys.